primary results are in for the four states that went to the polls yesterday. In a test of former President Trump's hold over the GOP, the Republican candidate whom he backed in the Wisconsin race for governor, that's Tim Michaels, beat Lieutenant Governor Rebecca Kleefish, who was endorsed by former Vice President Mike Pence. Also in Wisconsin, Democratic Senate nominee, that is the Lieutenant Governor Mandela Barnes, won the primary, setting up for a Senate showdown in November against incumbent Republican Ron Johnson. ABC News political director Rick Klein with me now for more on what all of this means in the Midwest, also the larger country. So Rick, Trump's candidate for Wisconsin governor won the primary. What does this say about the high stakes race, first of all? And then what does it say about Trump's hold over the GOP? Yeah, this is one of the most closely divided uh, states in the country. You can see there how Tony Evers, the incumbent governor who's running for re-election, won by about 30,000 votes uh, four years ago. The, uh, Joe Biden won by about 20,000 votes. So we know this is a state that can go either way. And Scott Walker, the man who was governor there for two terms and who lost last time around, his lieutenant governor was Rebecca Clayfish, the candidate who lost last time around. So it's a high-risk, high-reward proposition for Tim Michaels. He is a self-funder, a uh, wealthy businessman who has the backing of Trump. Intriguingly, he's been a little less strident on some of the election denialism than some of his rivals have been, but they are four square in the Trump camp. Trump, of course, lost the state, lost it narrowly after having won it four years earlier, so it really is going to be anyone's guess when it comes to the general election. Okay, yeah, so it's a really important state to watch. I guess arguably they all are, but this one seems to have a little more inherent conflict than some of the other contests. What's the latest on the Senate showdown between the Democratic Lieutenant Governor Mandela Barnes and then the incumbent Republican Ron Johnson? Johnson. Give us a prediction. One of the most interesting matchups that we're going to have of the year. Ron Johnson uh, in Wisconsin, he's the only Republican senator who's running for re-election in a state that, that, that Joe Biden won last time around. Uh, he has now served two terms, came in as an outsider businessman, has remade himself as a fierce ally of Donald Trump. Enter Mandela Barnes, uh, only about 35, 36 years old, a uh, popular lieutenant governor, and also would be the first ever black man elected to the Senate from the state of Wisconsin. Close ties to the progressive movement. You really can't come up with a, a contrast of two different men than to see this, this matchup between Barnes and Johnson this fall. Yeah, the two extremes in a way. So Mandela Barnes, as you just referenced, calling himself a progressive, winning that race. Progressive Congresswoman Ilan Omar also beating her primary challenger in Minnesota. So does this say anything about the larger direction of the Democratic Party? Yeah, look, it's been a mixed year so far for progressives, for liberals, the Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren wing of the party. But last night they had a big night uh, right there in Minnesota to have Ilhan Omar beat back a primary challenger. In addition to that, Mandela Barnes ran away with the nomination. The other candidates really got out of the way. And over in Vermont, Bernie Sanders' home state, uh, Becca Ballant, who's the more progressive candidate in that race, who's uh, openly gay, she is going to be the, the, she's the Democratic candidate. She would be the first ever woman to represent uh, Vermont in the House of Representatives. So all all in all, the, the, the progressives look at this map and say, look, we are on the march. And you saw Bernie Sanders taking a bit of a victory lap, again, after a primary season where it hasn't necessarily been the case that the, the farther left you go, the better off you are. So, Rick, obviously we're talking about one direction, progressives. On the other side, arguably election deniers, they are on statewide ballots as well. So what does this mean as we head to the midterms? I think this map shows us a lot. You're seeing across the, the country uh, candidates who deny the legitimacy of the last election uh, coming, into, coming into office. We're added to this list with Minnesota and Wisconsin. Also Washington State, where one of the, the few Republicans who supported Donald Trump's impeachment uh, lost her re-election race. That, that race just uh, formally projected yesterday. She con concedes that race. So you're starting to see this fill in, and, and it is, again, it's a clear contrast. We've got Republicans running for major office virtually everywhere. Co to coast with some primaries still ready to go in the next couple of weeks who say that the, the last election was not legitimately settled. Rick Klein, thank you so much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.